So we today discuss chapter 7, drying. Drying is a very important unit operation in food processing. To make the product dry, to make it more stable for the storage and so on. Especially for food, we do drying to reduce the water content. Specifically, we reduce water activity and then we can make the product more stable. Besides, we reduce the volumes, reduce the transportation and storage costs. We may also improve the sensorial quality as well, depending on the products. So in this chapter, we have three major parts. The first one, we just do some review on the properties of moist air. The mixtures between air and vapor means we call it moist air. The air that we are breathing now is called moist air because it contains some amount of vapor inside. And so we study the properties because drying is actually based on the properties of the moist air. And then we review a bit again how to read the psychromatic jar. I think you already studied this just to review. And then the, in the second part, we discuss together the theory of drying. What are the important parameters of drying? And then we see the drying curve, the drying rates, and so on. Because we understand this, it is important to understand all this chapter as well. And then part three, we will go through different drying technologies, techniques, okay, like the conventional hot air drying, the microwave drying that we discussed last week already, spray drying, free drying, infrared drying, and so on. We just go quite fast, the advantages, disadvantages, the main mechanism behind each technology. Okay, so now we go to the first part, the review. Good. Okay, so we just do a brief review of the properties of moist air or a mixture between air and vapor. The air that we are breathing, the air in this room, we can, how do you call this? We can say that it consists of or is composed two components like the dry air and water vapor inside and then similar to gas molecules because what in the air are actually gases water molecule present in air vapor mixture is earth maybe generate a pressure on the surrounding and then if the total pressure is below 3 atmosphere then we can apply the perfect gas loss for the moist air and this is a Gibb-Delton law, it's very simple. According to this law, the total pressure of air is equal to the pressure of the dry air plus the pressure of water vapor. So B is barometric, is total pressure of moist air in kilopascal. And PA is a partial pressure of the dry air and PW partial pressure by water vapor together we have barometric pressure normally this is small in the air we are breathing this is actually small because the content of vapor in the air is quite small we will see in the next some slide and then we review the enthalpy of dry air Enthalpy it was it just the amount of energy you need to convert from this point of energy to another point of energy. And normally, when you want to increase the temperature of air from a certain temperature to another point of temperature, the energy that you need would be the specific heat. This is the specific heat of air. Okay, now we talk about dry air first. Uh, it's just a dry air port and multiply by the different in temperature that we want to change. Then normally, 
the reference parameter is zero degree C. Okay. Then, for example, if we want to calculate the end time P of current air now, is that 27 degree C, then we take here 27 and minus zero specific heat, then we will have the end time P. What is specific heat? The, what is the unit of specific heat? Is the kilojoule per kilogram decrease decrease C decrease K the same okay this is the unit of specific heat means that the energy you need to increase one kilogram of dry air one degree C to one degree C or the energy re you release if you reduce one kilogram of dry air to one degree C down that's called specific heat. What is the specific heat of liquid water? Somewhere 4, okay? 4.18. This is the specific heat of liquid water. What does that mean? This means that to increase 1 kilogram of water to 1 degree C, you need more energy than to increase 1 kilogram of dry air, right? Or it also means that if you reduce one degree C of one kilogram of water, you release more energy. You supply more energy to something else. Okay. It's just like uh, how you call that. It's the content of energy of a material.